When humans first started to switch from hunter-gatherer societies to more agricultural ones, a key geographical feature was something called an alluvial plain. So what is an alluvial plain? How did it get there? Why is it important? And what does the future hold for these areas? Well, alluvial comes from the Latin meaning to wash against. And high up in the hills and mountains, rainwater washes against the rocks. It breaks off pieces of the rock in the form of sand or gravel. As this material is then carried downstream, it's bashed against the stream bed, creating finer particles like clay and silt. Now, some of this material is carried further downstream, and other parts go into forming the banks of the rivers and other deposits. Now, this does mean that during periods of heavy rain, these other deposits can be carried downstream, turning the river into a muddy brown colour. And when this excess water and mud get further downstream, the banks of the river are lower, and so the excess water can then burst the banks of the river, creating a floodplain by the side of the river, and depositing all the material being carried by the river onto the land. The floodwaters will then slowly drain away, leaving behind the soil which has been carried by the flood to settle in the lower parts of the areas of the land between any hills, gradually smoothing out the terrain in the process. As this process then repeated over time, creating a fairly flat, fertile area. This floodplain, however, is a fairly localised event, so floodwaters associated soil won't actually travel that far from the banks of the river during a flood time. Over time, though, the river will keep on bursting the banks, and when this happens higher up in the river, the river will then change course and follow a different path to the ocean. Future periods of heavy rain will again cause a new path of the river to burst its banks and create a new floodplain in another area. When you have several of these floodplains are created next to each other, they eventually create the alluvial plain. This wide, relatively flat area near to a water source makes an almost ideal area for building settlements and creating farmland to support the settlements. This is often why those early civilizations decided to choose alluvial plains to settle in. As the society develops, though, they're not likely to want the river to be continually bursting the banks and flooding the land. This may damage the crops growing on the farmland, or damage houses, or even drowning farm animals and people. So to prevent this, they may construct high artificial banks and walls along the sides of the river, which, while it stops the river from bursting the banks, it also stops the river from changing course, it also stops the river from adding to the alluvial deposits on the farmland. So over time, especially as farming gets more intensive, minerals and nutrients in the soil, which originally made the location ideal for farming, are being used up. Farmers then may top up these nutrients in the soil, but the excess nutrients they then may wash off into the rivers, creating problems with something called eutrophication. So over time, these rivers still carrying substantial deposits from the hills and mountains above the alluvial plain, but the higher river banks preventing the river from moving these deposits onto the alluvial plain during periods of heavy rain, so when these deposits are still actually being contained within the river itself, and often these deposits will be released from the river in areas where the speed of the river slows down. Now this can happen in bends of the river or at a lake along the river course, potentially turning it from a lake into a mud flat. And finally, the material could be deposited where the river meets the ocean. For large rivers, these deposits may represent millions of tons of material, which could then be removed by dredgers. Dredging, however, can create its own problems, starting with the disruption of the organisms living in the river, including things like fish spawning, followed by the loss of water quality as all the silt is stirred up, reducing oxygen levels in the river, especially downstream from where the dredging point actually is. Now, if dredging is only done in part of the river, it may also increase the risk of flooding in other areas that were not being dredged. Then there's the problem of what to do with all the material that's being dredged up. Now, while in theory dredged material can be useful, there's just too much of it to be used up. The disposal of the material can also create its own problems. 
This mechanical removal of material from rivers also is extremely expensive, so authorities often look to other measures for rhythm management.